No, Another that's great one. I always, yeah. I hate when people lose their jobs. I, I, and I know that we tend to look at these people as just interchangeable. They have families. Right. They have I get it. feelings. I, I hate get it. when they lose their job. But this is a very results-oriented business, and the results just were not there. Joe yeah. Woods fired. That's the big news from yesterday to today. Not a surprise. I, the surprise would have been. If he hadn't been fired by noon today, I would have been shocked. Yes. Uh, Mike Prefer is still on staff. That means it's likely he's staying on staff. Yeah. Right. And Kevin Stefanski is going to give his news conference here in a little over an hour. So he's not going anywhere for those of you that thought uh, he could three, be at 3 30, right? Yeah. 3 yeah, 30. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, think there's still, I guess there's a chance Prefer, if Prefer's going to get fired, it's going to be between now and then. But I don't you think it's they do it happen. at the same time? I think probably yes. I would expect. But I would still but, say until that press conference, there's a chance. But there's yeah. no chance the fans he's getting fired. No, I don't obviously. think so. No. Yeah, I think that ship has long sailed. Yeah. Busy, busy show. We'll talk about the Browns' loss in the micro. We'll talk about their 7-10 and 10 finish in the macro. We'll take a global look at where this franchise is on January 9, 2023. Is it better positioned than where it was a year ago, two years ago? Obviously, in pro sports, you want to arc this way. If you just look at the numbers, eight or seven wins from a year ago, what would they finish last year? Eight and nine. Eight and nine. It's mm-hmm. down one. Certainly not the direction you want to go in. So we'll recap all of that, put a bow on this season, look forward to the future for the Browns. Yeah. What is it? Also, the 2023 schedule, I've got to tell you, I just without getting into detail now, because we'll go into that later, I think it's about as easy a schedule as I can remember. Stop we'll, it. We'll talk more about I, I, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Listen, nothing's easy for the Browns. When you right look now. at the non conference, the six non conference yeah. games, there's eleven non conference games. Very yeah. few of those teams or are playoff games. games. Non division games. Yeah. Very few of those are playoff teams. That's true. So we'll dive into that. We'll yeah. talk about that. We'll grade the scale, ten being the easiest you can get, one being the hardest you can get. Where does it rank? Tim Couch, his final appearance of this football season, will of course bring Tim back throughout the off season as news warrants um, and we'll keep him in the fold but he's going to put his final bow on the 2022 season as well uh, later I want to I haven't told you guys this but it hit me on the way in today I want to do something later in the show don't want to spend a lot of time on it I want to call it the one name blame game obviously when a team loses or a team wins there's a lot of credit to go around there's a lot of blame to go around this is kind of like no fence riders I want to pin you guys down on one name for our blame game, okay? So you can think about that. We'll you, do that are you, later. Are you serious? You're smiling you ear to ear. Are you yeah, serious? Yeah, yeah. Are you By the way, James, one no. name. Let me, let me start serious? with this because there's something serious? that really stands out to me. Do you guys remember when Andrew Berry and Kevin Stefanski came in three years ago? They used three words when they talked about their football team. Smart, tough, accountable. Remember that? Mm. You know what? That's is, a great point. Is this team smart? No. Mm-mm. Is this team tough? No. Is this team accountable? They are not. They're none of those things. I'm really glad you brought that up, Bull, because I yeah. have forgotten oh, yeah. that. That's beautiful. That, that's I know segue. that plays that's into what segue. you want to talk about today, but it really <laughs> Bull, is. that's a great <laughs> point. They're none segue. of those things. It's a segue. And they've had three years. Like, typically, you're not going to see the team that they think they're going to be in their image sure. in one year or two years. But by NFL standards, if you haven't made a major corner turn in year three, you're likely on your way out the door. Yeah, right. And I think everybody on this panel would yeah. agree that Kevin Stefanski is squarely in the hot seat for next season. If we don't see a big turnaround, he's gone. No doubt. And then, and if that doesn't... Now, we're all going to be rooting for them to turn it around I am. and get off to a great start and that nobody's getting fired. But if that doesn't happen, then next year's wasted too. Let me, let me ask you a question. I, I, I can't take it no more, really. I really... If I was in any other market, would he still be working today? No. No, he would not be. Now, you can't That's not just true. count no, very the fact, much so. though. See, see very here's much the so. thing. His arc has been reversed. Yeah. He started off with 11 wins. Then he went to eight. Now he's at seven. That's the wrong uh, way. You uh, want to go seven, eight, 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 That COVID 11 uh, is Brent, looking real on, shaky. Wait, I'm going to use your own words yeah. here. Smart. <laughs> no. Accountable. No. And tough. No. There you go. You know what? I <laughs> so by his own at, words, he the, the Bengals kept Marvin Lewis 15 years. That, don't make, it, that don't make it right. I don't. Yeah, it doesn't I, I, make it right. I, I tell you this. I tell you this. How many? How he, many times they go I to the playoffs? A lot, but I, he never won. I, I, tell, hey. I tell you. I tell you what. In some place, he would have made Chicago. They wouldn't have it. He'd be gone. Yeah, there. no. There, there are other. There are other. Yeah. Be gone. We, we can't say that the Browns now whether Kevin Smith should be fired or not is a fair debate. 
And I said yesterday to G, I'm done defending Stefanski. I can't yeah. defend him anymore. Right. If you want to fire him, I'm, I'm on board because I. I like, you're I'm, not advocating. I'm it, not advocating, not but I'm like, it. I can't argue. Sure. However, the Browns have <clears throat> fired coaches more than any other team. To sort of make it seem like the Browns are slow to get to things doesn't make any sense because they've never been before. This no, time they um, seem no, right. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. Here, when you're at the top of the food chain, bull, yeah. you have to make some decisions for the best of the organization. Right. Period. Regardless of what you or what you think. Now, all the symbols that are, that are necessary, he has checked every box. Yeah. She's been given every chance, right? Yeah. And sometimes you just have to cut bait and move on. You sure. do, whether you want to or not. But all the facts that you are lining up have just occurred. And then you, for somebody to come back and say, out of the public and say this, oh, give them, we'll see what happens in the next year. What? I told him like this, man. <laughs> I, I just want to let y'all know, uh, just to be real with you, I got to get frank. If it don't happen next year, your top players won't be here anymore. I'm just letting yeah, you guys know. Yeah, your window's closing. Now, they're, your top, your Miles Garrett's, your, your Nick Chubb's, all the guys you bought them jerseys for, they will not be here next year. So you rolled the dice this year. You you got four to six games next year. And if you and like Bull said, if you don't get it done in those four to six games, we are talking about a, a, a turn a complete turnover again. That's and, right. And, and think about it. We sat through this, and this is the thing I want to emphasize. Okay. We sat through hell. One in thirty one to accumulate these picks, to accumulate these draft statuses. To, we, we had no help on Sundays. You went to church, you came home, and, and even the good Lord couldn't help you or your Browns teams. <laughs> you, you wasted all those picks. Those picks turned out to be Baker Mayfield, no longer here. Those ter- picks turned out to be Denzel Ward. I don't know if he, he's going to be good anymore. Those picks were Dick Chubb and that Miles Garrett. Guess what? We are on the doorstep of of flipping that whole thing over again, and we talking about what we can get for people, making that 131 yeah. even more painful. Well, here, here, you gotta, you gotta lead this in, and you'll be stuck with Watson. And you'll be and have Watson. Well, well no, no, no nobody be eating well, that. Bottom, nobody be eating the that. The bottom line is, you could say whatever you want about the coach, about the rest of the roster. If Deshaun Watson, who let's face it, in six games this year was not good. Now we can make all the excuses. Yeah. We can bring up all the reasons. About facts. Some of them fair, facts. some of them not fair. Talk about facts. The fact is, he didn't play well nope. overall through six facts. games. No, nope. if no, he he's not. not back to a top ten, I'm not even asking yeah. top five. I'd like him to be top five eventually. But if he's not back to a top ten level quarterback next year, the Browns are completely screwed. No matter who the coach is, it doesn't matter. They've given because up, if yeah. he because they went all in on him, which yeah. we all. I don't, I'm not, not you weren't totally in on first, yep. but we were totally in. I'm yeah. still totally in. But if they got it wrong, they're screwed. They're screwed. And that, and that was why I wasn't all in. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, just I thought said you had no always, choice to be because Baker wasn't good enough. Right. You you had to move on. I think yes. everybody was right. of that mindset. But the direction of which they went, if this thing doesn't get dramatically Disaster. better next year, it's sideways for another five seasons. No, Let's no do doubt. the Tri-C read because yep, we're going to be no talking doubt. Browns throughout the show. This whole show essentially is going to be sponsored by Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga Community College. Man, get, the, get it right, man. Cuyahoga Community College. It. Cuyahoga Community College. It's I'm Cuyahoga Deshaun, Community listen, College. <laughs> this is in honor of Deshaun Watson. Sometimes I'm really good at it. Sometimes not so good. Oh, next okay. year, 2024, I'm going to be elite at St. <laughs> Cuyahoga Community College. There you go. <laughs> Tri-C supports their students financially, professionally, and personally, opening up the doors of endless possibilities. Tri-C brings us Browns talk every day. This Monday show is all Browns talk. Tri-C is where the future starts, and guess when it starts? Uh, right now. Classes begin January 17th, 2023. Check out Tri-C for your second Jay, post-secondary re- educational needs. Jay, real quick. Yeah. So, boy, if, if we yeah. went all in last year, right? right. We were all in. Yeah. Don't you have to go all in right now? What do you have, though? I mean, well, you have oh, to you're make, talking about changing. You have coaches. to make all the moves necessary because you you're in your feet. You already swimming. Yes. Yeah, but you're pivoting <laughs> you gotta your direction. Gotta back, you got to get back to shore, though. Do you mean by, sure. you mean player wise? I mean everything. Okay. Everything's on the I table. We, listen, yeah, everything should be on the table. But the ship has sailed on Stefanski. He's going to be here. Yeah. Obviously, you know, we've talked a lot about getting fired. But to your point, I agree. I think from the roster perspective, <laughs> the Browns got to like, even if it screws up their cap. Even if they trade more picks, like they've got to get all in. They've got to get Watson every weapon they can. They must get him another good wide receiver. They got to make sure that line's okay. And if that means doing something at left tackle, 
as hard as it may be, they got to get a front line nose tackle. Have we heard anything on the Wills injury yet? I don't know, but that, that, I haven't seen any details. That line looked <laughs> awful yesterday. Yeah, and, and you know, there's a lot of talk about well, they're not used to blocking for like, what? a scrambling quarterback. Not an excuse. It's just not. Uh, I, it's good to have a mobile quarterback. There were times that he moved the sticks, but there were times where he looked like he had cement feet and didn't feel pressure, and that's an issue moving forward. I want to make a point about the coach and his style. There's a lot of talk about where's the leadership from his position. And then from the, from the standpoint that a team takes on the personality of its head coach, mm-hmm. it looks like this team is passive, just mm-hmm. like its head coach. Mm-hmm. And it hit me last night at about 9... No, about 8.30 when they interviewed Dan Campbell before awesome. the, the start of the game. Yeah. In that moment, not only did I fall even deeper in love with Dan Campbell... Mm-hmm. But I fell more out of love with Kevin Stefanski, and here's why. Obviously, they needed some help to get in from the Rams to beat Seattle, and then they controlled their own destiny. When Seattle won the game, it was they were out. And in the pregame interview, Dan Campbell was asked by Melissa Stark, "Coach, you can't, you don't control your own destiny. What's your motivation?" Without batting an eyelash. He said he gave the badass answer. He right. gave the answer we want to hear. We don't want them to go. Right. Mm-hmm. And they, it wasn't that they didn't control their destiny. They were out. They were done. They were done. They were done. He's and like, what, Seattle screw had those to be guys. sitting there going, oh, my God. And you talked about this on uh, Thursday of last yeah. week, how they got screwed. Yeah, but it didn't matter. Didn't matter. Because Detroit because still played. Because Detroit is filled with a bunch of dogs. Yeah. And yeah. they're coached by a lead dog. And when he said that, I kind of just I, – I, I thought to myself – they're going to win this game. And they're going somehow, some way. They're going to I find a way it. to win and, this game. Now he made some coaching decisions that he may not have made if his playoff life was still in the yeah, balance. Yeah. It's easier to do that. Yeah. The the quick pass and the and the pitch yeah. was a stroke of genius. I don't know if he calls that play if their playoff life depends oh, yeah. on it. But the bottom line is, in that moment, I fell more in love with Dan Campbell and that tough dog mentality, and I fell out of love with our mentality. And here's why. Game three of the season with Jacoby Brissett as our quarterback. We beat the Steelers 29-17. to A 12-point victory. Take Jacoby Brissett out. Now, Pittsburgh changed quarterbacks too, and they also got T.J. Watt back. But take Jacoby Brissett out and replace him with a guy that we thought was a top five. And it's a 26-point swing in the outcome. The Browns lose by 14. And it wasn't even that close. And it wasn't even that close. Mm. And I just, as much as I want Stefanski to be the right guy, primarily because I have zero faith in Jimmy Haslam finding anyone better, as much as I want him to be the right guy, guys, he's not. It's f- He's at, not. At the very least, nope. it's fair to question that whether he is or not. At the very least. It's hard to it's hard to have faith in him right he now. He can't change his stripes. He can't change his mentality and no. suddenly become Dan Campbell you are and be a badass. I don't know, Jay. I don't know that I agree. Like at the moment, it feels like you have to have that rah rah coach. But in the end, the Lions didn't make the playoffs. I know, but the Lions having, it's, they it's, didn't. It's but not, not they came rah- out and played like their playoff life was at stake. And to me, it said those players are bought in I, to Dan Campbell. It, it, but, it, and the not, Browns went out there it, and all looked like a bunch of duds. It's not. It's not a rah. It's not. Well, I don't think it's a rah rah coach that you're looking for. You look at him with some swagger that come in here and command his environment. Fact. He doesn't do that, and it's irritating to me. And I'm not even a football player, I don't so even I, like, I can only imagine how the people I don't, in the I don't, locker room are irritated. I don't even like wearing my colors like that, bro, <laughs> because he don't represent. He don't. <clears throat> that, he don't represent me. He don't represent what, 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 what football is about. Football is about passion. Football is about going and getting. Football is about being hungry, and I think Mike, Mikey McNuggets, you hungry? I can always have a bill bar. Okay, it mm. is. All right, so go back to this. Hey, go back, go back to this. So, go back. so I have a bill bar read. I'm not sure if you were setting me up. Well, for I was bill saying, bar but you missed not. it. You missed it. I'm back doing <laughs> it. Don't mean to lie. No, no, no. Set you up. Set you up. Don't even know. No, 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 no. He set you up and you fumbled. You fumbled the rod. You're supposed to do a back cut. You missed it. So he's gonna throw me a lot. Don't throw me a lot. Hey, I'm gonna get into the post to the big fella. Hey, G Bush, I'm a shooter. I'm not an alley man. So you're an alley you're gonna be disappointed. That's a brag category. So here's the deal. Because I, I started thinking about it this week, yesterday. Because I'm sitting here, 
And this this will tell you how you know I love you. Everybody know I love the Browns, right? Hell, I could change my TV. I'm gonna watch Ohio State women basketball versus Illinois women basketball and put the Browns on the phone. <laughs> wow, they you got small downgrade, screen status. You downgraded them. Sit right here. Flip phone. SSS. <laughs> small screen status. That, that's what Damn. I did. Dang. I was like, no, because here, I was thinking about Clowney and everybody else along the way, and I said, you know what? They're like kids. They're acting out. They're acting out because they're not getting supervision. Beautiful. That's what this is. Yeah. They're all acting out. And Brad, it's like going to the parent-teacher conference. Yes. <laughs> and you get to the parent-teacher conferences, and your your parents, they ain't sat at a, a living room table in years. Now, all of a sudden, they're wearing matching clothes, going to talk to your teachers. <laughs> they get in there and say, you know, you know, Garrett is really a smart, intelligent man, but something is really not clicking with him. He doesn't have that same look in his eye. He doesn't, he's not as really engaged. Do you guys know anything happening? And they turn around and you, they say, I don't know what's going on with Garrett. We get in the car, they're looking at you like, why, why would you embarrass us like that? Why would you? And you turn around and look at them. What do you mean, embarrass you? Why are you embarrassing me in the store? Y'all don't like each other. And you ain't doing it for the kids. We know you don't like each other. Dad, we know you be drinking a lot. And mom, you take a lot of late phone calls at night with the, with the mailman. So what are you telling me? Are you airing familial? Yeah, well, no, 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 that was a scheme. Like, that was like, did that happen? To okay, you? that is a writer's embellishment. Right. These right. are not actual events. These are events. not actual events. But, when you look at, yeah, I'm gonna go to school with a problem because you sitting here acting like we some peachy keen family, like the Browns acting like, and every single kid that come out of here on the back of Junior went happy. Uh, 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 we don't even know what happened with Kareem Hunt. We don't know Baker was unhappy. J JV and Clowney's unhappy. Miles Garrett was like, you know what? I'm gonna just lie. I'm gonna lie, just lie. Just here, here. I like you guys. We're, you know, we'll gotta fix it. Man, it tells him. Telltale signs yeah. is there, Brad. But guys, yeah. here's there, the bottom yeah. line. There, there. We've been through this before. We've had these debates already. He's not going anywhere. But here's what you can fix, though. Yeah. I'd like to strip him. Pause. Well, that's I, a little that's, inappropriate. Wow. I like, I like to embarrassment. Super pause. I'd like to strip him of his play calling, Billy. I'm for that. I, I, if you're going to come back, the only way he's coming back, that's fine, because he needs to work on some of those things, those, those communication skills, talking to people, yeah. figuring out everything. No, you're now not going to be buried in the sheet. I'm going to take year. you further. This has happened before. In Ann Arbor, it happened. When Harbaugh, they said, you will come back here? We're stripping you down. All your people, they gone. You're going to bring yeah, some they, other they, people they, up they, here. They didn't leave him by himself. We're going to give you one more shot at this thing. Yeah. But it's going to be under, Bull, our, are you okay with under, that? under our terms. I got to tell you, G, <laughs> it seems like... So, what are the duties of a head coach? To, the First and foremost, he's the CEO of... Yeah. 53 guys. Yeah. We've tended to look at him as the offensive coordinator when we've got Alex Van Pelt, yeah. who's not in that role. And I know yeah. that you've made the point that a lot of young coaches, of coaches call their do. plays. However, I don't think he's properly checked the boxes of the other duties of being a head coach. No. So I, <laughs> I think that's a, that's that's a good ask. If, if it's not Alex Van Pelt, find fire him and find someone else. That's right. You'll have input on the offensive game plan. You'll have veto, he which a lot of head save. coaches do. Yeah. Final say. Final Listen, save. You don't I, want to run this on a fourth I, and one. Fine. You make that call. I, I'm I'm fine if they do that. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm actually okay if they don't. I know I'm in the minority opinion there. Uh, I think most importantly is finding the right defensive coordinator because if your head coach is not going to be that rah rah badass guy, well, you need the defensive coordinator to be. Because I agree. The with defensive that, coordinator yeah. on this team a is, Greg Williams is the type. head coach of the defense. Okay. Let's face it. Yeah. That's what he is. We may not like it that yeah. way, but that's the way it's going to be. So, did you hear during the game you said, on my small phone? <laughs> did you hear what, phone. what the guy was saying on the small phone? He said, the one announcer was talking about Chubb, mm -hmm. right? He said, he's your best weapon. And you don't even utilize them. They were completely confounded with how they were, how they were not using yes. Nick Chubb. They were like, this is two weeks in a row. Like, this is unbelievable. You know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering. I think Bullet might have been you that made this point. I can't yeah. remember. Might have been Tyvis. Somebody made the point last week that perhaps the reason they threw so much in the Saints game when it was freezing cold and windy is because they wanted a sample size to see how Deshaun Watson throws the ball in cold and windy. Uh, okay. So, if that's the case, these last three games were nothing but an experiment. I agree with that. And the, I agree. the problem with that, I know you know what Nick Chubb can do. Right. 
and you want to see what we can be like as right. a pa- more pass-heavy offense. His numbers were not good. Even in Pittsburgh, where it was sunny day and the conditions were, were fine, it when you look at his numbers overall, Watson didn't impress me. Mm-hmm. His, his overall line was, you know, again, he threw for two interceptions, which you just can't have. One of them was, I don't know what in the world he was thinking. It oh, was no. a bad no, decision and a bad bad throw. Both were they were both bad both decisions. Were the one was the first a, one was the worst. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. awful. Absolutely awful. But I, I just, as I'm watching him and I'm watching this offense, he was 19 of 29 for 230, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Now, if this was truly an experiment to see what we have, and the rust is gone, six weeks in, did, he's closer to the guy he's ever going to be now than nah, he was when he came nah, back. I don't, I don't think so. So I'm looking at these numbers going, no, that's not going to do it. That's not going to get it done. For the season, and it's only six games, I understand that, but his, his QBR was 79.1. Yeah. Seven touchdowns, five interceptions. Yeah, yeah. yeah we – Listen, he didn't play well. No. If he doesn't play better next year, they're screwed, no matter who the coach so, is. It doesn't matter. They, I, I, I think you guys all season have overplayed the non-use of Nick Chubb when he's third in the league in rushing attempts, but whatever. That, I mean, well, that's well, here, that wasn't me. I'm not a football guy. What do you have guy. yesterday? I said, you, had, you, had a, you, had, you had an actual football guy. You had an actual football guy. You had an actual football guy making his commentary I, 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 yesterday. I, I, that was a football guy. I've already Yes, got, I would agree. In yesterday's game, he should have gotten the I've ball. Talk, I've talked about it, man. Sometimes there's a lot of people in life that, that view themselves as this, but the reality is over here, the reality is everybody else sees you as this. The reality is you he wants to be a, a quarterback whisperer so bad. <laughs> he wants to be the whisperer so he want to get invited to that offseason passing academy <laughs> where he's sitting up there with Andy Reid and they going over concepts on the whiteboard, drinking wine. He's not he does he doesn't he don't understand. He's not gonna get invited to that man. But what do you want him to do? You look, want look, they gonna be a passing team. They, like he's he got they, the Sean Watson for if, a reason. This is a crazy thing. Yeah. If if they want to get to that, he's gonna have to understand what he is and what he ain't. And he's gonna have to get a range to somebody else. He doesn't have the personnel or the mind to be a passing look, just go and look at it. When you watch these other games, watch the motion. Watch people get schemed open. Watch the different route combinations. Watch the play calling and how they set up certain plays and routes wide open. And even even when you watch the Pittsburgh Steelers, go back and watch. Third and long, multiple times. Third and 17, third and 10, they third and 12. Up. They picked off. We don't even got routes at 17 yards. When we started to, we sitting down talking about Kareem Hunt set, checking down, <laughs> sitting. I said, why well, everybody sitting down? Everybody fought. It ain't, we ain't even at the sticks. He does not have the requisite ability to be a passing team. So if he wants to be that, I don't, I don't disrespect yeah. it, but he's going to have to move along. And well, to he's going to have to show he can adjust, right? He now has, we hope, a great quarterback for the first time in his career. He has to adjust to that player, and he has to change the offense accordingly. So let, he didn't do it midseason this year. No. Could he have? I don't know. Maybe he should have. Here, here's but he a, didn't. Here, give me give me a close up on this one, Mikey. Steve, give me a close up here. I want you to get my face on this one. We're about to make a point. Look. Now we're talking about the quarterbacking. Mm-hmm. This is to my man Deshaun Watson. I'm 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 excited that you're here, right? But bro, <laughs> whoo, <laughs> bro. Here, and I ain't no hater, dude. I ain't either. You're you going to have to get back in the laboratory here. With a right? You a ain't no different than the NBA, NBA ball player when it come off a bad season like Magic did that one year. You got to get back in the, in the grind, in the barn where nobody sees you, and you got to put that work in. Because you looking like, mm, we can't put the cake mm, on you, dog. Mm, like I Donovan can't. Mitchell did this, this, yeah, this offseason. Yeah, yeah, you got to come back, bro, because I'm going to just tell you what we saw around here. You, you and Stefanski, you and Stefanski <laughs> better be. Y'all better get tight. Y'all, I don't care if y'all got a bunk bed together or whatever it's gonna be. Y'all should, y'all should be. Matter of fact, tell the family this ain't one of them years. Like it's a recession, we're not gonna be able to go on vacation this year. Boy, honey. you had, you had, you, had on, you had on orange like you was in Clemson, but you was in Tangerine I, Country. I, I need, don't know what you had on. We today, need, buddy. we need to see you in Cleveland all year. We, like I'm talking, we're gonna see you at the rib fest. <laughs> we're gonna see you at the fireworks, the car show, <laughs> the car show. I need you at everything. He should change his zip code. <laughs> we got some stuff from Adam Schefter here. Let me read this. Have you got this tweet, Mike? 
We do. Let's get that tag board, though. Uh, the Cleveland said, and we Browns. we got Tim Couch in a sec. After Tim Couch, we're going to do all the Browns defensive coordinator possibilities. Okay. This is the first on the list that is now official from yeah. Adam Schefter. Adam Schefter, the Cleveland here. Browns, who relieved defensive coordinator Joe Woods of his duties, requested permission today to interview Patriots inside linebacker coach Gerard Mayo for their defensive coordinator job per source. Obviously, Mayo was a great player. Yeah. Uh, he's only he has not even he's not been a coordinator. He's been part of the Patriots tree. <sighs> anybody have an initial thought on that? Because yeah, I have a strong well, initial here, thought. I, I, here, I never discredit anybody from, from being able to step in and do a job. But I would just tell you this here. <laughs> you went all in on the QB. We just talked about it, right? You got to take every step possible to make sure you get the best of the best to give yourself the best opportunity for the best outcome, right? Yeah. Stop running and grabbing to the first thing you see, the latest, greatest toy on the shelf. Let's see what's actually out here. Right? I, I, I would say uh, avoid, like the plague, any Bill Belichick assistant coaches. Yes. Period. Well, I, Full stop. I don't, I don't agree no. with that. To, Nate, start uh, start so ripping off the success. I don't, well, no, no, no. I'm not I doing it. We're not talking about head coach. No. Any coach. Period. Any of them. And here's why. Yeah. The, the, the secret sauce in New England was never – about any of the assistant coaches. It's always been about Bill. Always. Bill and the quarterback. Bill and the quarterback. So you'd be against Flores as DC? I would. I would. All right. I'd take I just look at the guys that have left New England, and I know yeah. that most of them went to become head coaches. Right. They have been not just failures. They have been colossal but failures. Flores wasn't a colossal failure. He's a failure. He had a winning record both years. I I, I would take Flores because I mean, he's a decoy. He had a winning he's record. Both years. The Dolphins' defense before he got there was trash. Aggressive. It's back to being trash again this year. Aggressive. First of all, do you think he would come to Cleveland? Yeah, absolutely. No, I would not. Yeah. I'm not sure that I don't, I'm not know, sure I don't know. I think, I think he he's going to be in such high demand that he'll be able to pick his spot. I don't know. I don't that think he will he be. Picks Cleveland. Why would, why would he you, better be. Why would you leave Cleveland unless, he, unless he's already has. The Steelers gave him shelter, right? They gave but he's him not shelter. a defensive he, so, but I will, so, no. It'd him, be a step up to go him, from where he is They gave him here. shelter, so he's only leaving for shelter. Yeah, like, right? like my now, time you going into a season with, 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 with Stefanski on, on a one-year hook, maybe? Yeah. They coming over yeah, here. He might be able to get a head coaching job if he uh, if Brad, Brad makes a good point. He makes a good, um, that's a good point. There are a lot of folks that believe that when a coach is in his purgatory year, that you could call it whatever mm. it wants. Yeah. You know, he's going to keep his job. This for Kevin Stefanski is his purgatory year. Yeah, you, period. You, and you it add, is. You add this. And, and it's tougher to get quality coordinators to come on board I'm gonna add unless piece. they think they've got a chance at replacing Stefanski. Well, I'm going I'm 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 to add a Maybe. piece to that, right? And you, then people might not want to hear this. For a minority coach. Yeah, he gets very limited opportunity. Yeah, yeah. he not jumping ship to those ship that might yeah. sink on him because he I just stay where I am because he get that Hugh Jackson. If they Hugh Jackson you, you that back down to HBCU. Yeah, you couldn't even get a regular job <laughs> with a Maybach. He, like, like, yeah, <laughs> they, they, you know, he's taking a picture with a Maybach. Like you said, like yeah, you down there like he couldn't get a Division One. I'm like you can at least with the Mount Union. 